Okay, let's do another related rate problem. Let's take a look at it over here. A plane is flying at a constant altitude of 2 miles and at a constant rate of 180 miles per hour. A camera on the ground is following the plane as it flies away from the camera. How fast must the camera rotate to keep the plane in view when the camera is pointed up at an angle of pi over 3 radians? Okay, let's start with a little diagram of the situation. I'm going to put the camera on the ground over here, and then the plane is up in the air, let's say, over this way, flying away from the camera. So let's draw a little right triangle here. Looks like this. I'll call that angle theta. This is the ground, so the plane is two miles in the air, and that's going to be the variable x. This is the distance between the camera that's on the ground and the point on the ground that's just directly below the airplane. So I'm going to look for this. I'm going to find my relationships here when theta is equal to pi over 360 degrees. So I've kind of drawn it like that, but we'll see. Um, anyways, I need a relationship between theta, 2, and x. Looks like a tangent's going to work. So I'm going to say this. Tangent of theta is equal to 2 over x. So here's my relationship between x, 2, and theta. Now if I differentiate this with respect to time, which means I'm going to differentiate implicitly, then I'm going to get a relationship between the rates of change of theta and x. So let's do that. So when I differentiate tangent, I get secant squared theta, and then by the chain rule, I need to differentiate theta with respect to t, so d theta dt. And that's equal to, well, here I have 2 over x. I'm going to differentiate. Let me think of it this way. 2x to the negative 1. That way my differentiation is just a little bit easier for me. Take that exponent times the coefficient. So negative 2, same base, raised to a power 1 less, minus 2. And now I'm differentiating with respect to t, so I need to use the chain rule. So with respect to t, this is dx dt. Well, let's see what I have right here. I have theta. Uh, I can probably find x dx dt, the rate of change of x with respect to time. Well, that's just the speed of the plane going in that direction. So dx dt is going to be my 180 miles per hour. d theta dt is the thing I'm looking for. Let's see if we can simplify this a little bit. Let's see. I'd rather work with cosine here. So how about 1 over cosine squared theta times d theta dt is equal to, how about if I write this as negative 2 over x squared times dx dt. All right, and then let's see, I'm going to solve here for d theta dt. That's the rate at which that angle that the camera is pointed at the plane is changing. So let's just solve for that. d theta dt is equal to, multiply both sides by cosine squared negative 2 cosine squared theta, all divided by x squared times dx dt. Okay, so there I've got a relationship uh, between the variables here and the rates of change of the variables. Uh, let's see, uh, let's see, at this point right here, some people would solve this for theta and then do their differentiation. Let's just do that real quick just so you can see. If Tangent theta is 2 over x. That means that theta is the inverse tangent of 2 over x. So if I do that, I solve for theta directly like that. Then if I, if I know my derivatives for the inverse trig functions, I can find this derivative d theta dt a little more um, directly. So let's just do that. d theta dt. Derivative of inverse tangent is 1 over 1 plus that uh, argument, 2 over x, quantity squared, times the derivative of 2 over x. Well, I just differentiated that right here, so that's going to be times negative 2 x to the negative 2 times dx dt. Okay, now if I simplify this a little bit, let's see, what do I have? Negative 2 over x squared in the numerator, all that divided by 1 plus 4 over x squared, and that's times dx 
dt multiply numerator and denominator by x squared. Look, this simplifies real nice, and there's no trig functions left in it. Negative 2 over x squared plus 4 dx dt. Okay, so for those of you that see this in terms of an inverse trig function like this, either one of these is okay, and either one of these formulas is going to work for d theta dt. Okay, so what I want to do, I'm going to erase all this and just write the results down, and then we can continue to solve the problem for, from there. So I'll be right back. Okay, so here's the, the summary of the formulas that we just derived right here. Tangent theta is 2 over x, or theta is inverse tangent of 2 over x. Either way you want to look at it. If you differentiate this one and solve for d theta dt, we end up with this. If we write it the other way with inverse tangent and differentiate, we end up with this. So we can use either one of these formulas. So I want to find d theta dt when theta is equal to pi over 3. So let's see. Theta is equal to pi over 3. I know that dx dt, that's the rate of change of this right here, dx dt is the speed of the plane, so that's 180 miles per hour. And let's see, what, what else do I need right here? I have theta, I have dx dt, it looks like I need x, so we're going to have to solve for x. Let's go back to our formula right here and write this down, tangent of theta, which is pi over 3, tangent pi over 3, is equal to 2 over x, so I'm going to solve that for x. Okay, let's see, tangent pi over 3, I think of this as 60 degrees, tangent 60 is sine 60 over cosine 60, so I'm thinking of this as square root 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. That tells me that this is going to be square root 3 equal 2 over x, so x is going to be equal to 2 over square root 3, and that will be miles. Okay, so 2 over square root 3 miles. Okay, so I have theta, I have dx dt, and I have x. So I can substitute these three things back into either one of these formulas, whichever one I want. If I do that, I'm not going to show the work right here. You can do that work, do it on a calculator any way you want. You end up with this. 67.5 radians per hour for d theta dt. So I end up with uh, an answer here of 67.5 radians per hour. Now, I've done some conversions here with this just to make it a little bit more intuitive. If I change this to degrees per minute, if I change this radians per hour into degrees per minute, I end up with this, 64.5 degrees per minute. And then I can also change that to degrees per second, and that ends up to be 1.1 degrees per second. Okay, so that maybe is a little bit more intuitive. It looks like when that camera is pointed at the plane, the plane's flying away from the camera at 180 miles per hour at a constant altitude of 2 miles. That camera is going to have to change the angle by 1.1 degrees per second at that point right there. That's its instantaneous rate of change. And let's see, what did I do? I guess I forgot the negative sign. When I do all of this, okay, there should be a negative sign here, here, and here, just telling us that that angle is decreasing like that. The, the angle is coming down from this point right here as it follows the plane. Okay, um, okay, I'm going to run out of time on the YouTube video here, so I erased the board again and did the problem a couple more times. Here's the results. Uh, for our original problem, theta was equal to 60 degrees. The plane is about 1.2 miles away from the cameraman and the rate of change of the camera angle is going to be negative 1.1 degrees per second. If I make theta 45 degrees, then the plane's going to be 2 miles away, and the rate of change of the angle is negative 0.7 degrees per second. So the, the camera doesn't have to change as much as it did over here. Now if I go all the way out to 30 degrees for theta, x is equal to about 3.5 miles, and you can see that d theta dt is negative 0.4 degrees per second, again a little smaller than this one even. So as the plane flies further away, the camera angle has to change less and less.